Hey there, I'm Alan Matthews from Classical Guitar Shed, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to connect chords beautifully. Here's the problem. We're playing a piece, and we have these little hiccups between our chords. How do we connect them smoothly? Be them chunks, or in patterns, or in lines. How do we connect chords beautifully? And that's what we're gonna be talking about in just a second. If you enjoy this, please subscribe to this channel. So to start with, let's just look at some chords. Here we have a C chord, we have a C chord, a G7 chord, and another C chord. Really basic chords, C, G7, C. So then how do we connect these? Well, there are two different ways to think about connecting chords. There are many ways, but two different contexts. One is in chunks, which is what we have written here. We have a chunk chord, then we have another chunk chord, meaning there's vertical lines uh, on the page like this. Boom, boom, boom. And we'll talk about a different, couple of different ways to do that. But first, and this is, I think, probably the most useful thing that you'll get from this video. If only you get this, then you'll be sounding better in everything you do. And that is whenever we have arpeggios or patterns, right-hand patterns with a chord. So these are the same exact chords, but we're now just playing the individual notes. So we have a C chord, then the G7 chord, then the C chord. So this is what we have on the page. Here's the main key. This is the big takeaway for you for this entire video is that you don't have to chunk everything. You can walk from one chord to another. So instead of hopping, you can just step into it. So watch this. Think about the last note of one chord leading to the first note of the next one. So we have the chord, the top note, then move the move the bass note first before you move all the other fingers. Then you can move all the other fingers. Here, the first finger connects to the, the third finger in the C chord, in this one right here. So the big thing is listen to the connection point of them. And the connection point is going to be the last note of one chord leading to the first note of another. Once you can do this and think of your chord as a string of notes um, in this kind of context, a string of notes, and you just need to connect the last one to the first one, it'll make it a lot easier and you won't get the little clipped note that doesn't sound good. All right, so now let's go back to our chunk chords where we just have chord, 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 big chunks, no patterns in the right hand, just big chunks. So one of the ways, and one of the easiest ways, is to add a rest. And so instead of trying to connect them, instead of trying to connect them, instead we just make a hard rest and put it in exact time. So here we have two beats each for the chords, and so we're going to add an eighth note rest. Doesn't matter if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's just an even rest, so like one, two, three, mute it, one, two, three, mute everything, and then back. That gives you a hard space to move your fingers. And so the way to do that is one, to just touch all the strings with your left hand, touch them all, or touch everything with your right hand, right, and then get ready again, and then get ready again, and as long as your timing is good while you're doing this, it's going to sound intentional and it's going to sound good most of the time. The next way we're going to talk about is using open strings in the capital chords or the same exact thing holds with shared fingers. So if you have a finger that stays consistent, and this would be the first thing to look at for this, for this technique, if you have a shared note between the chords, then we want to let that note ring throughout and let that note cover the other notes shifting. So here, these are the open strings for this for, for these. And if you'll notice right here, we have this G stays with the G, stays with the G all the way through. All of the other ones, um, all of the other ones change. But we do have the open strings that we can use to ring as long as possible. So with this top note right here, it being an open string, we can wait to the last minute to put on that note and then wait to the last minute to take off this note. Same thing with this B right here. 
it can last as long as possible before we actually put our first finger back down on that C. So the open strings or shared notes can really help. With this one that stays constant throughout the, this G right here, just make sure you don't mute it out on accident. Make sure that I'm just going to bring that note out. It doesn't mean you have to actually make that note louder, but just I'm just doing that to demonstrate that you can keep that note ringing and it will cover your other fingers moving. Fingers are lifting, but that note's still ringing. So as long as something can ring over, the note, the chord is going to sound more connected. Well, the next way we're going to think about this is in a different context, and that is when we have a melody line going on on the top voice, and then there are chords underneath. So what this means is whenever we see these chords, we have these three chunk chords right here, right? These are big vertical chords, chunk, chunk, chunk. Well, we can also think of the melody note on top which is just the top notes of it. And that is a line. And so what we can do is really, first off, just play that so we can hear it, right? Connect it, boom, boom. Really connects the notes. Whenever we have a melody line going on, that's more important than the chord underneath it. So the melody line's already been going, right? Mary had a little lamb, it's fleece. It doesn't matter if there's a chord underneath the word fleece, the word fleece is the important part. The melody is more important than the underlying accompaniment or the chords underneath it. So that's what we want to connect. That's what we want to hear coming out more than anything else. So then whenever we do that, we first just play it. And then whenever we practice, we listen to that. And listen for that note being louder than the others. You can just poke out that finger a little bit more. Um, but you want to listen to that note connecting as much as possible. And that can be your guide for the other ones. And it's a priority. That's more important than getting the other stuff. And the last thing I'll mention is that sometimes you just have to move your fingers really fast. You can use these, these tricks or these, these points of attention that we've discussed here to, to guide your practice. Don't, you know, don't mute out the string that uh, connects the chords or the shared notes within the chords, things like this. But you're also just gonna have to move your fingers really fast sometimes, and that's just going to take practice. And there's just no substitute for that. But we can use these techniques to stack the deck in our favor. It's not always easy. There is going to be, just because our fingers touch the strings, to stop the strings before replaying them, there is going to be a break. So really what we're doing is creating the illusion of connected chords, even though the chords are not really connected. So there it is. Hope you've enjoyed this. Please go connect some chords and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.